So we're at the HVAC Training Symposium here in Florida, and I have the really awesome opportunity to have Jason come in and talk with us. Now, a lot of times we talk about books and the information in books, and I hear all the time people's like, oh, I don't like to read, and the book stuff's too confusing. What's important to know is that book stuff is just communication. There are people that love HVAC just as much as I do, and Jason is one of the really awesome authors. He writes articles, he writes books, and he's a human. He's right here. And just like he's going to talk to you, it's the same stuff in words. So, Well, thank welcome, you. Jason. I appreciate the, uh, the intro. That was uh, some nice words you said. Thank you. But uh, I think we all kind of do our own thing in, in a different way to, to move the industry forward, to inspire people to do things. I just happen to do it with words on a page. You do it with actions on a camera. Other people will do it with words to other people face-to-face -face conversations we all have our own way of you know communicating and inspiring others to to learn things so that's just the way i for now do it awesome. i used to teach i you know stand in front of the classroom and teach 15 20 students at a time and inspire them but you know i'm getting older now and i can sit in my office and just do it with words on a page so what is it that you do now um there's a lot uh a i lot. sit on a lot of committees content development we're getting into the online e-learning thing. We're doing interactive programs for student learning, kind of student-led programs where it's not a video where they just sit there and watch, and it's not a book where they can just sit there and read. They have to interact with the program. They have to click on this and hover over that and do this. So they're engaged the entire time. There's, it's not just a sit there and stare at it type of thing. That seems to go over well with the younger generation to, to pick up on technical topics like we talk about. If you can animate something or show a 3D you know, image of something, they understand it a little better. When I teach, I try and communicate to people that we work in the field of the invisible. Everything in our trade should be invisible. Electricity is invisible. Um, refrigerant should be invisible if it's done right. Heat transfer, if you look in the air, heat and humidity, it's invisible. But we have tools and we use those tools to see those things. But if you can then take and put some sort of an illustration or an animation together that shows them what we say is invisible, there's that aha moment where I may not be able to draw you a picture of electricity, but if I animate a, a line showing you how the electricity flows, and they understand it a little better. So we didn't have those things coming up, you and I, you know, it was just a... That really fits to everybody. The younger generation are just used to seeing that. So right, right. And that interaction, that's the way I, it keeps me involved. Right. And then I see some of your stuff and it's interactive and it's interesting and I'm, I'm engaged with it. I think that's a very important part of learning is engaging everybody. You got to meet them where they are. You know, we were raised without the internet, um, without cell phones and things like that. And we had VHS tapes that the teacher would put on. And Those are great days. Yes, they, yes well, we get yeah. the tape. <laughs> but, and now, you know, with technology where it's at and everyone has a mini computer in their pocket and the software technology that's out there, we can up our game a little. And we should up our game. The equipment is a lot more technical. It's a lot more digital. Things are evolving. It, it's not just three different types of units out there now. Now you've got a a whole tree of units out there that branch off into different areas. So the education is going to have to do it as well. And Jason's being very modest. He's had so many different articles and books he's working with. I mean, he's absolutely genius. And he says he's on some committees, but he's not just some committees, very, very important committees about the future of refrigeration. And some of the stuff, the new refrigerants, is coming whether you like it or not, it's coming down. He's on some of these committees and he has the freshest information. So you guys want to know about new refrigerants that's out there. He has the classes available. You can learn this information. And if you're a teacher, we have full-on programs, modular-type programs where, okay, there's a book, there's an e-book, there's an interactive program, there's a PowerPoint for the instructor to use in class, and then there's a certification exam to, you know, ensure content retention. So if you're looking, okay, how can I train 15 people in this area? Well, here's the package, and it has everything you need. It's got an online content, it's got interactive content, there's a written book for the Fred Flintstones in the group, and then there's a PowerPoint for the instructor, and... Everything is there for you to just, you know, one section at a time. Here's this little program. And that's another thing I wanted to bring up. He also works with ESCO Institute, and ESCO is all about helping instructors. I know when I was an instructor, that was so incredibly valuable, me connected to the people at ESCO. They would call. Howard would call just randomly. Hey, Ty, how's it going? Everything going good? How can we help? But they have all these resources to help instructors, not just instructors at colleges, not just instructors at schools, but also local training programs. So if you have a training program and you need help with, you need certification classes, what else can we do? 
a massive amount of resources, and Jason is a big part of making those happen. He's in that all the time. Every time I'm calling him, he's in, and he always makes time to work with me and talk to me. Hey, Ty, what's going on? I know he's got a thousand things to do, and I got these little basic questions, but he always takes time to answer and work with me. And I, man, I really, really appreciate that. I always have. No problem. <laughs> I appreciate the, the shout out, so to speak. But well, how did, did you ever think you would be here writing books and making internet content and all of this? No, I didn't actually. I thought I was going to be a tech crawling in attics forever, but <clears throat> the opportunity arose for me to become a teacher, and I did that for 15 years. And then the opportunity to, you know, take what I've done in the classroom and put it into a book form, so to speak, arose, and I, I jumped at that. And then it's evolved since then, you know. Again, if you're looking at the interactive programs and the content that we're coming out with, it's, like you said, it's been a lot of work, a long time coming. The pandemic kind of pushed us uh, in that direction. Everyone was moving to e-learning, and so we started coming out with all of these things to help the instructors so that they could still teach, but remotely, to the HVAC crowd. And that's how it kind of all bloomed into what it is today. So how did you, you get all this beautiful, awesome career and family and house, how did you get started in HVAC? I used to work uh, in the coolers on the dock, and I eventually got laid off, but the guys used to, on Sundays, when we were working, would always purposely drive the forklift into the, to the hanging cooler, and we would have to, and so now we get the time off, we all go sit on the dock, and we would have to call out the company to come and put the, the evaporator back up and recharge the system so we'd get like a four hour break. And I would see the checks that would go out to these companies, and I'm like, man, that, you know, that's something I might consider. And I got laid off, uh, and I went to say, let me go to school and see if this, this could be real. And it took off from there. I loved it. That's awesome. Everybody we've talked to has come from a different background. It's just amazing the diversity of people and how they ended up doing HVAC and so many different important parts of HVAC. So what advice would you have for somebody new coming into the trade? You have to be willing to learn every single day. I, my mantra is, you learn something new every day until they lower you into the ground. And if you stop learning before that, then you're not doing it. You're no longer practicing, so to speak. I always say there's three stages in life. There's the growth stage, the stagnation stage, and after stagnation comes death. So you always want to be in the growing stage. If you see yourself stagnant, it's get coming. back into the growing yeah. stage because you know, you know what's next after that. But you got to be humble. You, you can't say, I understand it, and this is how it is, and there's no other way. You have to be willing to see things outside the box or from a different point of view or change the way you think about something uh, when you learn something new. You can't just go in with the mindset that I know how this works, I know how this is done, and this is how it's going to be done. If that's how you are, you're not going to make it long in this industry. And that, that's cool that you say humble because you're being he's really being so humble right here because he <laughs> is really an amazing person, the stuff that he's I done and accomplished. It. It's, Thank you. It's quite impressive. So key is, you know, never stop learning. That's what we've been saying right. the whole thing is right. never stop learning. And Jason, really thank you so much for no coming No problem. On. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it.